Trampoline parks are a fun venue for the whole family to enjoy. At least they're meant to be. There are loads of these parks spread across North America. However, the spotlight is shining on the safety of these attractions after a series of accidents. Extreme Air Park, Canada's largest indoor trampoline park, is under particular scrutiny after an accident involving four-year-old girl Maddie Villanueva in August 2018. The accident has led to her parents, Sarah Villanueva and Jesse Charbonneau, calling for the government to investigate the safety of these venues. To begin with, Maddie was enjoying the facilities at the Extreme Air Park in Vancouver when the incident happened. Her father described the incident as a bad bounce. She wasn't getting up straight away. Then she started screaming really loudly and I knew something was wrong, he told CTV News. It soon became clear that Maddie needed medical assistance. A member of the trampoline park staff brought an ice pack and did what they could to help the four-year-old. Then they waited for paramedics to whisk her away to the hospital. Maddie received an operation on a broken leg and a fractured ankle. The pain was so intense that doctors were forced to give her ketamine and morphine to treat her. The injury meant that Maddie would have to attend her first day at kindergarten in a wheelchair. While not blaming the park for the accident, Maddie's parents were nevertheless less than impressed with the treatment offered to their daughter. Villanueva told local media, they had no care for her, no first aid kit, no place to go put her when she was getting hurt. Charbonneau also suggested that no staff were trained to deliver first aid to her properly. In an official statement released to the press, a spokesperson from the trampoline park answered the parents. They said, our team are first aid certified, and we have a first aid room which includes a comprehensive first aid kit. The attending team member was certified in February of this year. Controversially, the park went one step further and blamed Charbonneau for causing his daughter's injuries. It released video footage showing Charbonneau engaging in a double bounce with his daughter, causing her to fall. The double bounce is against the safety rules of the trampoline park. In 2016, a study suggested that hospitalizations from incidents occurring in trampoline parks in the United States were 12 times more common than five years prior. Responding to this study, the International Association of Trampoline Parks claimed that injury rates remained very low and safety is always a priority. There is no official regulation on safety of trampoline parks, although there have been calls for this to change recently. The International Association of Trampoline Parks recommends that parks use adequate padding to protect users, as well as sufficient supervision. However, the American Academy of Pediatrics believes that children should completely avoid recreational use of trampolines. Maddie's injury is the third major incident to have occurred at an extreme air park in recent times. Earlier in 2018, 46-year-old father Jay Greenwood sustained fatal injuries after performing acrobatics into a foam pit at the same branch of Extreme Air Park. Meanwhile, just a week before Maddie's injury, a three-year-old boy was hurt after falling through the springs at the Richmond, British Columbia, branch of the park. The mother of the three-year-old boy who was injured, Ravi Gill Douglas, was also very critical of how staff at the park reacted. In a post on Facebook, she warned, the facility's mandate is not safety for their customers nor customer service. My son took a six-foot drop and we had to track down an employee to come help. She continued, as a mother this situation was traumatic and I do not want any other parent or anyone to go through this kind of incident. The post received hundreds of shares. Most of the comments were supportive of the notion. One commenter wrote, I'm totally against these trampoline places now. I have heard way too many scary stories of injuries. Another wrote, I remember these indoor facilities. No control, loud and chaotic. The facility responded to accusations of negligence on this occasion as well, saying it accepted no blame. In a statement offered to the press, a spokesman said, prior to this surveillance shows that he was playing with the Velcro at the spring flap which prevents exposure of the springs. 
Our team acted quickly, the boy was retrieved, and our first aid team assessed him. Gil Douglas snapped back at this statement, accusing the staff at the facility of having no idea how to help. No one at the front desk seemed to be able to help, have a sense of urgency or know what to do, she said. Ultimately, another parent pulled back the Velcro and hoisted the child to safety. He was unharmed. Gil Douglas was not alone in having a say over whether trampoline parks should be regulated. Dr. Emily Newhouse, medical health officer with Vancouver Coastal Health, told Global News, We've seen reports from our colleagues, both in our health authority, also around the province, that they're seeing a significant number of injuries come out of trampoline parks. With this in mind, you would expect a few injuries with trampolines considering their nature. The International Association of Trampoline Parks states that there should be roughly one for every 10,000 jumpers, with 90% of injured parties being treated on site and released. However, the multiple accusations of poor action from the staff when children do get injured is something that may alarm other parents. Calls for the industry to be regulated heated up after Jay Greenwood's death. Now after these two injuries to minors in quick succession, these calls are growing louder than ever. It remains to be seen whether any official action is taken. All official communications from Extreme Air Park have insisted that the park is completely safe if you follow the rules. Nevertheless, Michael Marty, owner of the Richmond branch, has said he'd be pleased for government regulations to be introduced. In a statement he said, I would welcome the opportunity to work with your government to develop comprehensive regulations that give the public confidence that, in addition to the hard work trampoline parks put into ensuring the safety of their guests, there is provincial oversight into trampoline park safety as well. This story was really incredible, but you will like the next one more. This scarred war vet opened up to a five-year-old and her reaction was uncomfortable to watch. Simon Brown was a soldier fighting in Iraq in 2006 when he was shot by a sniper, changing his life forever. He decided to open up to five-year-old Temperance Pattinson from Darlington in the UK as part of the Facing It Together campaign. Her reaction to his story was caught on video and was uncomfortable viewing. Facing It Together is a project run by the veterans charity Help for Heroes. It aims to put the charity's beneficiaries on camera with their supporters, those people who donate their time and money to help. Their conversations are then recorded for the public to see. Brown, or C, as he is introduced in the video, agreed to be featured on camera with his supporter Tempe. Sai has been through a great deal, having suffered a terrible injury during a mission in Iraq. In 2006, he was shot by a sniper. The bullet hit him in the face, going into one cheek and exiting via his other cheek. In essence, it caused massive damage, particularly to his eyes. The wound left Sai in a coma for 18 days. But the real problems were yet to come for this brave soldier. After his injury, Sai faced a long road to recovery. He underwent a series of 25 operations in an effort to reconstruct his face. Unfortunately, the damage to his eyes wasn't repairable, and Sai was left without most of his vision, changing his life forever. Once he had healed, Sai became involved with the Help for Heroes charity. Speaking to UK Channel ITV, he explained that it was important for people to see past a soldier's disfiguring injuries. He said, it was that platform, the support, that got behind us. There was a time when soldiers weren't very proud. Sai explained to ITV, we weren't getting the greatest press and sometimes you were embarrassed to go out in the street with your injuries. This platform meant that we didn't have to hide the scars. Facing it together with all the little stars that raise the money and give us these opportunities, it's just phenomenal for me to be involved. One of the little stars C mentioned was Tempe. She was three years old when she had learned about Remembrance Day, having bought her first poppy to commemorate the fallen. From then on, this young girl had felt the need to help soldiers and their loved ones. Subsequently, Tempe did everything she could to help raise money for soldiers in need of help. In fact, this five-year-old took part in charity runs and even completed more than one triathlon. She had to do the cycling section with stabilizers, having not actually learned to cycle without them yet. 
It was these efforts that led to her taking part in the Facing It Together video with Sai. The 38-year-old veteran opened up to Tempe, telling her his story. That was when Tempe responded, and her reaction on camera was remarkable. Even though I didn't know any of the soldiers, I just thought that they did something for us. Tempe told Sai during their conversation. I thought I could give a present back to them by raising them money. I'm quite proud of the soldiers. Sai was clearly touched by her response and said, Well, I'm telling you now that the soldiers are very proud of you because I'm 38 and a half and I can't do a triathlon. At this point in their conversation, Tempe revealed her fear of cycling and that she needed stabilizers. Ultimately, Sai wanted to let his new friend know how grateful he was for her help. He said, It's because of the challenges that you do and the money you raise and the support you get that people like me can get better. So that's why people like you are our heroes. Then Tempe says something that's sure to tug the heartstrings of anyone who sees the video. She says that she considers people such as Sai to be her heroes. It is this kind of relationship, the one between supporters and beneficiaries, that help for heroes is so keen to highlight. The video of the pair talking has been very popular, with 1.7 million views and users sharing the video more than 17,000 times. But that hasn't been the only positive result of their conversation. Since talking, Sai and Tempe have become fast friends and teamed up to further help the cause. Tempe and Sai decided to do a five run together in aid of help for heroes. And Sai was waiting for Tempe on the finish line when she got to the end to congratulate her. The pair exchanged a hug and smiled for photos afterwards. Tempe's mom Emily thinks help for heroes scheme has been very positive. Speaking to UK newspaper The Sun, she said, meeting people like Simon makes such a difference because it allows you to put a face to it and see the difference it makes to people's lives. Tempe and Sai aren't the only success story to come out of the Facing It Together project. Another pair, Ken Nash and Philippa Haig, had an important conversation about post-traumatic stress disorder. Although not a physical injury like Simon Brown's, PTSD is a serious problem for those leaving the armed forces. Ken told Philippa about his condition and how art has helped him. He said, I had a lot of paranoias when I first came out and I always thought people were talking about me. I got into charcoal drawing. All my nightmares were in black and white. So I just used to get up in the middle of the night and just draw. The advocacy ambassador for Help for Heroes, Mark Elliott, is delighted with the way that stories such as C and Tempe's can help their cause. He told UK newspaper The Daily Mail, it is so important that people from completely different backgrounds and ages can connect through a common cause.